What's going on everyone? It's John from Tech back at it again, this time with a video on Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 with my expectations for the price, performance, and specifications of the Radeon 400 series cards reportedly set to launch at a special event in Macau. So without further ado, let's kick off this video. So a quick rundown on the Polaris architecture and for all the different sources that I cite in this video, I'll leave links in the description box down below for those of you that are interested. Those Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Polaris 10 using chips and GPUs that will be the higher end of the two, set for high performing mainstream cards. Polaris 11 uses a smaller chip being made for laptops, all-in-one computers, and entry level cards. Both using 14 nanometer FinFET chip manufacturing technology that has brought about a huge leap in power efficiency and performance via a massive increase in the amount of transistors in the same space of silicon. As we've seen from Pascal's 16 nanometer fab tech, not to mention AMD's new architecture is going to offer many other improvements including those to the commands processor, geometry processor, L2 cache, memory controller, display engine, and compute unit performance, and now HDMI 2.0a. And the GPU set to tackle the highest end of the market from AMD, the successor to Fiji. Vega is not expected until 2017, and we've seen a leak of the chip specs using HBM2 memory, 4096 shaders. This is when the big dogs are set to compete with the Pascal Next Gen Titan X, which is also slated for 2017. So in the more near term, all eyes are on Polaris 10 and Polaris 11, using two different chips for an array of graphics cards using the GCN 4.0 architecture, likely the R9 480 and R9 470 to launch at the Macau AMD's editors event later this month. Naturally, there's lots of questioning as to the price and performance structure, and to what degree these cards will compete in price with the soon-to-be-released Pascal GTX 1080 and 1070, with May 27th and June 10th release dates respectively. Most information is pointing towards the launch of an R9 480 for Polaris 10 and an R9 470 for Polaris 11, leaving the more direct competition at a set price for another date. Thought to be Polaris 10's inclusion of an R9 490 being the point of overlap, leaving an R9 490 and 490X pitted against the GTX 1070 to to battle it out at the sub $400 category. However, for the short term, comparing $200 and change cards versus a $380 card is not really an apples to apples comparison. Although price to performance will be quite interesting, seeing the favorable ratio achieved at the $379 from the GTX 1070, it's reasonable to expect a competitive price to performance ratio at the sub $250 category from AMD. And being that AMD's stated goal is to expand the mainstream VR market, most of the hype and excitement with likely the R9 480, set to tackle the mid-range $200 and change category with an expected launch at the end of the month in China's Las Vegas, Macau. Which is no coincidence that it's right before Computex Taipei, and not terribly far apart geographically either. AMD is typically known for providing great budget-oriented bang-for-the-buck type graphics cards and processors, so this strategy is true to form. If you watch my top 5 graphics cards to buy in early 2016 video, and given that deals and prices change, nonetheless, generally speaking, for low and mid-range cards, I felt AMD's offerings provided a better value, and with the high-end market having a new performance king in the Pascal GTX 1080 obsoleting even NVIDIA's very own Titan X and 980 Ti. AMD seemingly does not have an immediate answer for this in the near future. It's said to have better performance than two GTX 980s and SLI, and having an MSRP of 599, this card is on the higher end of the price spectrum, and delivers serious performance with GX5 memory from Micron. Watching it run Doom at 200 FPS 1080p Ultra on Vulkan at the launch events on the 6th was pretty amazing. So back to AMD with a declared focus more on the mainstream market, this brings to attention the expectations for the Polaris 400 series cards. Firstly, going off what AMD's VP Roy Taylor went on record, quote, to say Polaris will expand the total addressable market, end quote. So currently 7.5 million people are rocking GPUs of GTX 970 equivalent or greater capability, which is the current minimum recommended graphics by Oculus VR. So in order to expand the total addressable market, a GPU with these specifications or superior at a lower price point than that of the R9 390 or GTX 970 would be required. What the R9 480 and 480X are looking to address, with potentially greater than that of an R9 390 performance at much less the price, around $225. That's a real game changer that certainly expands the total addressable VR market, especially being that the most popular card on Steam hardware survey shows the GTX 970 at around 5% of users. Getting this performance or greater at a significant discount is quite enticing. Taking a look at my Twitter feed, directly after the paper launch of the GTX 1070, AMD's Roy Taylor replied to a tweet asking if AMD was worth the wait. He said, quote, you should, especially if you care about DirectX 12 and VR, end quote. 
Interestingly, DirectX 12 was a topic of interest that was not really spoken about at the NVIDIA launch event. NVIDIA being first to market with a Vulkan driver, there's a lot of focus there and on open source from them. Some specifics from Polaris 10. We did get a chance to see Polaris 10 based GPU play Hitman at 1440p 60fps using the DirectX 12 API. The API AMD has not shied away from being a proponent of. 1440p 60fps is actually rather demanding, much more so than a single 970 or R9 390 could achieve with settings cranked up, giving us a gauge of the basis to form performance expectations. Furthermore, some benchmarked results of a device ID for Polaris shows 2,304 shaders or 36 compute units with a low 800 megahertz clock. A little deduction from this information factoring in the performance jump per compute unit and a regular clock speed over 1,000 megahertz equating to equal or greater than R9 390 performance. Not an aggressive estimate given the clock speeds we saw out of FinFET GTX 1080. And numbers from GFX Bench make the case that the R9 480 will match the R9 390X performance wise. It does stand to reason that the 3 390X performance at R9 380 prices would sell like hotcakes because this does seem to be the performance sweet spot that gamers are looking for, crushing 1080p and allowing for 1440p gaming. As for Polaris 11's R9 470 replacing the R7 370 series and R7 360 cards with a chip that consumes even less power, AMD offered performance comparisons against Nvidia's Maxwell GTX 950 in January at CES 2016, showing what is presumably a Polaris 11 card running Star Wars Battlefront at 60 FPS in medium settings. Nothing too groundbreaking producing console performance but it did showcase the power consumption efficiency, almost doubly efficient than that of the GTX 950. That said, being that Polaris 11 is said to be intended also for thin laptops, with a stated aim by AMD to provide console performance in thin, energy-efficient laptops, all-in-one PCs, etc. You can expect adjustments in clock speeds among the different SKUs, so in a graphics card for your desktop having a higher clock speeds and perhaps more power. The leak specs are for a SKU with device ID 67FF, the lowest end scaleback version from Polaris 11, link below. The R9 470 is looking to be an interesting card as a budget option, likely having a price tag similar to its predecessor. Still the least exciting to me, power consumption reduction is not my main focus. I know like many of you, we love seeing the performance increases across GPU generations more than anything else. I would like to see or have seen a bigger increase in performance as we may see from the R9 480 and we are beginning to see out of the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080. The sweet spot for gamers is looking to be around the $220 price if the R9 480 and 480X deliver what a lot are expecting. All right, everyone, that concludes this video on Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 and my expectation out of the Radeon 400 series graphics cards. You let me know what you think in the comments down below. So for around $225, achieving R9 390, GTX 970, and possibly R9 390X performance, is this gonna be the new go-to card given the popularity of all the aforementioned cards? And is Nvidia gonna answer with a GTX 1060, likely in the fall? Which one will you be going with around that price point? As always, guys, Thumbs up if you like this video and please be sure to hit the subscribe button right here. I got some cool tech unboxings, tech reviews, PC builds that you can check out on my channel, Awe of Tech. This is John from Awe of Tech. I'll catch you guys in the next video.